My name is Aminu Motele Nyako, and I'm the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Sable International Farm. Located in Adama State, we're a dairy processing plant and we process milk daily into dairy products. Sable Farms, as you are aware, is a storied farm. It was built in 1982, established in 1982, and I just took over the helm over five years ago, and I knew it was imperative that for any kind of agro production and processing, you needed stable, reliable power for you to be able to deliver that. And it's within that viewpoint that we decided to invest in solar technology, as well as best battery energy storage systems, to the tune of 5 megawatts of solar, 5 megawatts of best, to be able to give us a type of energy smoothing um, that will allow our operations move and operate in a very seamless manner. Um, the honest truth is we do not look at it as a side project to our core business. We put renewable energy at the core of the success of the business because without energy reliability, dairy processing will not work and that's why it has not worked in Nigeria. So as part of our investment portfolio for our new factory, which is the largest of its kind in Nigeria, the largest dairy, first dairy processing plant in Nigeria, the solar solution and battery solution is actually integrated within the capital investment to make the factory work. It's not, most people think about energy as a, an addendum to your, to your investment because you're relying on grid connected power or you're relying on generators to be able to give you the power as a supplement. So you're relying on that, but we didn't think of it that way. Our factory was built with power as an infrastructure in mind ab initio, and that has helped us greatly um, over the years. So for us, I think we, we, we the, I'm sorry, the renewable energy and solar technology that we've implemented has not been household solar. It actually has been industrial scale solar for business. And for us, solar is not seen as, a, it, it's a necessity for our area. Adama gets about 7 megawatts from the grid. Sebo is producing 5 megawatts. It lets you know that for any sort of industrialization or unlocking of value that can happen in any part of our state, solar has to be at the core of that technology. So the way we've impacted the communities is that we've brought solar um, milk collection centers, milk collection centers powered by solar technology, which has allowed for cooling at the local level and has been able to unlock value for them for their milk products, which we then aggregate. We believe that solar, that there needs to be an energy mix throughout Nigeria with every state or geopolitical zone leveraging their comparative advantage. It, it just so happens that solar is at the core of the energy source in the Northeast. So I think it's good for us to have it in context that Sebo is a private sector um, entity and we do things that would enable our own bottom line and business. However, there are spillover effects that come from being at the vanguard of solar technology. For us, we believe solar is a necessity to be able to unlock value within the Northeast because we have such a strong comparative advantage in it. Um, however, what that has been able to signal to governments and every other stakeholder is that you don't just look at sol um, solar technology within the, cli uh, within the lens of climate um, change. You can look at it as a core competence to be able to deliver value to businesses and individuals. Ever since we invested in the solar technology within our operations, we've had solar home solutions come to local communities. We've had local technicians that come in now to fix be able to adjust. We we work with NIDA, the university systems, to get students that will help us in the maintenance of our batteries and best systems, and also provide IT systems that can help for remote monitoring of the system. We believe that this again will serve as signal to the opportunities that can be created within the northeast and within the state. Well, I think a massive revolution is taking place. Our entire system is on IT and renewable energy and that gives you very unique advantages it gives you efficiency 
transparency, accountability, and reliability across this system. Currently, collect milk from about 18,000 farmers across three states, which is Adama, Taraba, and Borno State. That landmass is probably the landmass of the southwest of Nigeria. So collecting milk from that kind of wide expanse of land with that many people, without a reliable energy source to keep the, uh, the quality of the milk in check throughout the value chain, you don't have that if you don't have solar power to be able to give you that. And secondly, without IT systems that can ha- allow for remote monitoring of individual collection of milk at communities, you don't also have the transparency and the knowledge base to be able to do informed decision making about how your processes should run. These two things are things that are critical infrastructure for our program to be able to run. And I'm, I'm glad we in the young generation have embraced IT and now most people are now embracing solar technology for their energy source and delivery. Well, I'm not sure that uh, we're not the only IT based one, I believe, but I think we take IT at the core of our business process. Other people may not. Other people may be using it for um, maybe sales, maybe uh, payroll processing and little things like that. As we have a full enterprise software that was built for purpose to be able to manage remote farmers, handle their milk quality, understand the processing and delivery at last mile. So IT and renewable energy is at the very core of our business. And we believe that for a country as diverse and large like Nigeria, IT and these energy solutions have to be deployed at scale because that's what will help us manage our civil service, manage our health records, manage our education records and allow for us to be able to unlock value across the value chain. Well, uh, before they looked at challenges, now they all looked at blessings as far as we are concerned in February. But we made our investment in the solar technology. We really did investment. And the concept of investment is paying today to enjoy tomorrow. When we did this a couple of years back, we did our investment at 305 uh, exchange rate per dollar. And right now, I think we're about 1,600. So the investment has actually already paid itself back fivefold. Uh, additionally, um, diesel costs were 259. Petrol costs were about 220. And now petrol is about 800 and something in Adama. Diesel is about 1006. So already, <laughs> the investment that was made a couple of years back, because we again, like I said, we used to have reliable power. The only thing that could deliver it for us was solar and battery technology. And we made that investment. We were meant to pay back our investment in nine years, but we paid back much, much sooner. Well, um, in terms of our scalability, Sebo is looking at going grid level solar now. We believe we've gotten the licenses to go grid level and we want to be able to invest in solar technology at scale that will allow for other industries to come on our farm to our industrial zone on our farm and enjoy benefits that we have been able to enjoy over the last four years. We've built a master plan for the Sebori Agro Industrial Park. Um, we're breaking ground later on this year and it's our hope that other international businesses, local businesses within the state and even out of the state would locate um, to the farm to be able to enjoy uninterrupted power supply while also unlocking their various value chains. So we don't believe uh, it's limited to dairy. We are looking at having food processing, um, oil processing, mills, and all the value, value chains of tannery, poultry. Agriculture is at the base of Nigeria's growth. It has to be at the center of Nigeria's growth moving into the future. And agriculture doesn't work if you do not have reliable energy. And we believe that especially in Adamawa State and the Northeast, leveraging solar might be the surefire way of getting us there. So imagine technologies are never ending. And to be honest with you, the world the global world is evolving at a much faster pace than at any other time in world history. 
for us, the investment that we made at the time, I think the technologies have improved so vastly that in a single container that could take two megawatts of storage, now it's taking about five megawatts of storage. So in terms of the leapfrogging of technologies, it's already here, it's present. And I think for us within Seboe, we are more focused on getting our local farmers involved in formalized value chains so that they can earn a living. Um, we are very cognizant that for any kind of value to be created, there needs to be a blend between labor and capital. And we are heavily on the labor side to ensure that families have an, a living, have an income source that can be able to sustain and build communities while allowing for the capital side of it, which is technology, um, uh, principal capital and the rest, to come and serve as support mechanisms for us to achieve scale. I think if you move within that approach, a country with 220 million people cannot fully um, leverage capital sources for gaining value because labor would then be at the brunt of it. And we're seeing that in tensions that are rising in terms of minimum wage discussions pension discussions and other kinds of discussions happening within the country. So within our side, we are focused on the labor side, making sure that as many communities, localities, families, and individuals are coming into formalized value chain, whether it be dairy value chain, whether it be the meat, meat uh, industries or grain in terms of sorghum, millet, maize, or in terms of tree crops, baobab, shea butter, gum arabic, all these value chains are available in the Northeast, and we're looking at ways to be able to ensure that Sable Aid takes the lead in terms of private sector lead, to be able to integrate all these value chains, create value for our people, as well as signal to government that these things can be done. There's an economic concept uh, known as voting with your feet. Uh, voting with your feet is a concept that says, if you don't like where you are, carry your load and move. So for me right now, I'm really focused on the Northeast and other markets, creating the environment for us there. And if you like what we're doing and you're in Kebi or you're in Oyo or in Ekiti, carry your load and move to where there's greater opportunity. I think the more we do that and create competition within state in terms of the kind of incentives given to their citizens, in terms of the infrastructure provided for their citizens, the kind of services, be it healthcare services or education services, when people start seeing people move out of places to land of opportunity, then I think the entire Nigeria will be better for it. Um, there are things called, even in Europe now, there are things known as agrovoltaics, where you use solar as a benchmark for your uh, 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 agro production. So greenhouses right now, rather than use the traditional plastics, most people are using solar panels as, uh, as a cover so that you're not only generating electricity, but you're also providing lighting for your greenhouses, which um, as a last study, I think is almost seven times more productive than regular agriculture. Again, we need to understand that Nigeria is blessed with abundant solar. So for us, I think it is we do ourselves a great disservice when we're not leveraging all the kinds of energy sources that are available in Nigeria. The Northeast has solar. The Northwest has solar and wind. The North Central has hydro. The Southwest has bio biofuels. The Southeast and South South have coal. They have gas. They have uh, uh, crude. Right. So the honest truth is. If we're only looking at one of these energy sources and thinking it will provide enough for everybody, I think we're doing ourselves a great disservice. The only advantage solar has on top of all this is that it's diversified and it can be scalable. So you don't actually need to start out with your maximum capacity like other um, energy sources. Take, for example, if you find oil today, it may take you 10 years to build a refinery. However, and that, that refinery might be able to provide you 2,000 megawatts of power. So you can put up 2,000 megawatts of solar within one year. So these kinds of things are things that I believe that Nigeria that is currently facing its immediate challenge needs to be able to look at these different types of energy mixes and deploy them very, very quickly. 
in localities that can create value. So I'm not talking about household solar. Household solar doesn't do much. It provides convenience. It doesn't create value. What you want to do is invest in solar at industrial scale, if not at grid scale. That way you're able to provide solar to businesses that can then create value, create employment, and create a churn within the, the GDP of Nigeria. These are some of the concepts that we're, we're hoping that Sebo's model can signal to the government that these things are possible and these things are absolutely necessary within this within the economic context of where we are. Thank you so much for having me.